So it's it's an interesting one, this, because um, I've had a good day and a bad day. I think that's normal, isn't it? Um, you have some little victories and then um, you spend a lot of your time wrestling with something. Uh, and I'll be, yeah, one of the things I've been trying to do is get, I mentioned it in the last uh, entry that I wanted to get Lighthouse running um, because I want to be able to check that I've got a progressive web app and everything's in place. And I know that it works, um, but the problem was I wanted to push to Travis and every time I push to Travis it to do the thing. Um, but it turns out like debugging Travis locally, because you want to kind of test it locally, it, it's pretty pretty tricky. And I, there is a, a thing you can get like a Docker image, but I, I just couldn't get it to work. It kept timing out, I did a bit of a search, and it seems that uh, there's some built-in thing, some kind of timeout within Docker, and it couldn't get the image fast enough, and so it was just, it was just failing. And so I ended up having to um, kind of step by step on my Mac, kind of repeat the steps. And eventually, I, I kind of, um, I kind of got there. Um, let me just switch across, and you can actually see. Basically, most of it was actually okay. It turns out, like most of this actually came from the Lighthouse. Travis YAML, which I just updated. The thing is, is, it's this little bit here where it actually downloads a version of Chrome. Because on what you want to do is you want you run Chrome um, against a, a virtual display, which is what these two lines do. Um, but the download Chrome script, you, to, in order to get at it, you have to kind of N npm explore with the global switch and go to the Lighthouse module. And then within there, you can basically tell that to download Chrome. And the thing is, it looks for this Lighthouse Chromium path variable, um, which it then seems to sort of ignore. Um, it, it's strange, because the download Chrome script will fail if the Lighthouse Chromium path isn't set. But the Lighthouse Chromium path is set to, to our path prior to here. So anyway, I had to add this line where I move from slash lighthouse chromium linux which is chrome linux sorry which is where it puts it to the current folder and then i can actually run it you know and just check its version or something and then after that it started working so that was a bit of a fight that i didn't expect to have and there wasn't i found there was just no easy way to debug um like my travis script uh, because i was hey i couldn't get this docker image stuff to work so yeah uh, it was a bit messy and i spent a bit of time doing that but on the upside, um, I wanted to quickly show you around the design. So good news is, because I'm designing this, the designer and the developer get on famously. The designer is, I guess, quite understanding of a developer's need to change things on the way through the process. And the developer, well, it's almost like they you know, fully understand what the designer was trying to achieve. Um, it is kind of nice when you do both parts of uh, a project because, like this, because as I say, you get you know you get the push and pull, and it doesn't matter if I if I sort of think ah oh, actually I won't do it that way I'll do it this other way, it's fine right. Um, anyway, so the mocks I've I've got some mocks so I did some wireframes and I did some mocks and uh, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, let me show you the home page. I'll pop that onto Chrome there. So this is kind of what it looks like. Now, um, actually, if we do Chrome Dev Summit, uh, now I, did, I, did, I built this. And I kind of I wanted to take this idea on. I liked this sort of uh, slightly angular looking patterns and shapes. But I have kind of felt on balance when I looked back at this that it was kind of um, the colors were, I took the colors from the Chrome logo a little bit too literally. And so I felt like, you know what, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of subdue it a little bit, um, make it a little bit more, um, you know, a little sort of uh, contrasty. And I've done this, I'm told by one of my colleagues that this is called a hyper gradient. I don't know. Um, basically, all it is is like a desaturate the image, bump up the contrast, and then pop a gradient over the top with like a hard light transfer mode, and you get this kind of look. Now, I could probably build this with CSS blend modes, but they're not well enough supported. So I am almost certainly going to do these as actual images like this. Um, anyway, so that's the home page. It's it's you know fairly simple with a link to the code labs, a link to the schedule, and a link to the location, which is the SF Jazz. Center in San Francisco, bottom privacy terms and the code of conduct as well. So that's that's fine. Um, it gets a little bit more interesting over, I think, in the 
schedule. Similar kind of header, must head header. And then down here, I've kind of got um, the, the session information. And I, to be super clear, the session information is placeholder, hence the, the kind of Laura Mipsum kind of text there. This is actually the content from two years ago. I just kind of copy pasted the, the content and the times and everything else. So uh, this isn't me telling you what's going to be at that Chrome Dev Summit because I have no idea. Uh, but I wanted something that was a little bit more realistic rather than total Laura Mipsum everywhere. Same kind of masthead. And when I'm going, what I'm doing is I'm going to do a static build from section to section to section. And then I'm going to progressively enhance to something that uses JavaScript to swap out these sections. And I'm still debating in my own mind how I'm going to do that. I feel like maybe um, I'm going to um, do something where things shift up and down, as in the image fades out, and there's this yellow, this kind of yellow strip at the back here. I'm thinking that might move up and down. Because when you look at, um, for example, the, the live page, um, you can see the, the video player here with the session going on. And then this is kind of actually, it's that little yellow strip, but it's kind of slid down and made way for what's live now, um, which is apparently me, Jake arguing. Uh, over on Minutia. He does that so well. Uh, and up next is Alex Russell. And you can see them. We've got it kind of coming up later. And this is what I'm hoping for the kind of live section when you when the conference is actually live, that we give you what you need, which is give me the actual content and give me what's live, what's coming up next, and then what's like in line for the rest of the day. I don't know if I'm going to get to doing notifications. I put it there in case I want to do them and I, and I get a chance to do them. but. Time may be against me. Right, that's probably enough for right now. <laughs> um, it's exciting. It's good. I, I have done a little bit coding uh, coding today, but I'm going to save that probably for the next entry um, where I can talk about it in a bit more detail. So don't forget you can subscribe. Um, and thanks for coming along on the journey. <laughs>